I would ask this morning you would turn in your Bible to the book of Acts, the 28th chapter, the third and fourth verse. The New Living Translation reads in this manner, as Paul gathered an armful of sticks and was laying them on the fire poisonous snake driven out by the heat bit him on the hand the people of the island saw it hanging from his hand and said to each other a murderer no doubt though he escaped the sea justice will not permit him to live this morning I want to share with you from the subject the praise of others the praise of others. During these last few winter days, I have been blessed immensely by beginning the day on an early morning prayer service and then reading from this wonderful devotion entitled The President's Devotional by Joshua Du Bois. The Lord laid on my heart to read his devotions and then to turn them into a sermon Amen. because I believe they speak to the heart of all of us. And I recommended that if you want to do something for someone that will be a blessing, that you purchase a copy of this book. It has inspired me. It's helped me in terms of sermon preparation. It's also helped me in my own personal journey, even as I write the daily devotions each day. There's so much truth to this. And so these sermons over the next 10 months will be from the topics that he writes and so this sermon topic is a direct result of one of his devotions entitled the praise of others listen to what he writes Paul was shipwrecked on an island and then bitten by a viper when the island's inhabitants saw this, they immediately thought that Paul must be a murderer to deserve such an awful fate. However, However, when Paul miraculously survived and thrived after the bite, they quickly changed their opinion in their eyes. Paul was now a god. Like Paul, when we overcome odds and experience success, we may become objects of worship by the same people who previously condemned us. But just as we did not let their condemnation stop us, neither should their worship inflate us. The God with us in our failures is also the God of our success. And to him we must return all praise. And it's amazing how people change. And that's why, my brothers and sisters, we have to be careful how we respond to the praise of others. Some people will praise us one day and curse us another day. And according to the author, don't become inflated by some praises of others. Some people say nice things only because they want to be recognized. In other words, don't believe everything people say about you. Whether they're saying something nice or good. Many of us 
live our lives based upon what others think about us. And some of us suffer from self-destruction based upon how somebody else perceives us. You can't please everybody. Oh, let me preach this morning. No matter what you do, somebody's always going to find fault. On the other hand, as God elevates you, stay humble. This is an amazing story because it has so much truth to it. Paul, the humble servant of the Lord, is on a mission doing the Lord's work and will. This man of God has placed himself on the altar, making the supreme sacrifices of traveling thousands of miles to spread the good news of Christ. He is a personality that has attracted people from near and far. He had given up everything to serve the Lord. However, our scripture today finds him on an island after going through storms and being shipwrecked. His trials and troubles are starting to mount. The persecution of his efforts have increased dramatically. He's tossed to and fro on the sea of life. And while he is being there, he's in a storm that is about to overcome him. My brothers and sisters, whenever you take a stand for the Lord, be fortified the trouble is coming. Whenever you seek to serve the Lord, trouble will meet you head on. That's why I said earlier, be careful of sound bites. No one would expect Paul, who was handpicked by God, to have to go through some stuff. Remember how the Lord had saved him on the road to Damascus. Yes, sir. Changed his life. Yes, sir. And yet here he is now giving his best to the Lord, and he finds himself in a predicament that only God can bring him out of. Paul puts wood on the fire, suddenly a snake. The author says a viper crawls out of the fire and fastens itself to Paul's hand. This servant latched onto Paul's hand and would not let go. We need to look more closely, my brothers and sisters, at what's taking place. Yes. That's why Bible study is so important. Amen. Because you just can't read the scripture from a glance. You've got to look deep into what's taking place. A serpent, a serpent. Quiet and cunning. Dangerous. Serpent. Can lick and take the life out of you. Notice this serpent for Paul was real. More important because it's a symbol of those spiritual realities which keep creeping back into our lives. Satan is real. And he will grab us at our most vulnerable spot. Am I talking to anybody this morning? When you walk with God, the serpent will latch on to you and will not let you go. Snake. And when you read about the devil, he's cunning. He's clever. He can sneak up without any warning. Don't play with Satan. Don't play with snakes. I'm always amazed at folk who try to cuddle snakes <laughs> only to find the snake that they were cuddling will turn and bite you. In other words, don't mess with Satan. 
because he has a way of taking you down. And the devil will discourage you when you're trying to do what's right for God. He'll take the joy out of your life. He'll sap your energy. Am I talking to anybody this morning? Yes, sir. He comes into our home, robs us of our joy. Some of us, you know, want to sleep with Satan. Play with him. My brothers and sisters, you play with fire, you'll get burnt. Even though the serpent grabbed the hold of Paul, the word says that Paul shook the snake off. Oh, God. You can't do that by yourself. You need God to strengthen you so that Satan will not have his hold on you. Serpent snatched the very blood out of Paul's life. But he was strong enough to shake it off. Now remember, those who were observing Paul said he must be a murderer for this to happen to him. You know, sometimes what people do is when we go through... They must have done something. God is getting even. Come on, somebody talk to me. You know, we have these kind of folk who are always ready to judge you based upon what they think they know about you. So when you're going through, they immediately get to the point that they decide that you are somebody that God is trying to pull down. Am I talking to anybody? On the other hand, after... The snake did not kill Paul. They said, the same ones, he must be a god. It's amazing how people change so quickly. Do you hear what I'm saying? According to the word, the same people who decided that Paul must be a bad murderer. Then they turned around and said, he must be a god. You can't please, folks. How many times have you seen people change up on you? Oh, come on, somebody talk to me. How many times have you changed up on people? God was getting even with them. Then after God doesn't get even the way they said, they're getting God's favor. I mean, we're so fickle. We don't know God's ways. And you can't always please people and stop trying to please people because God alone is the one we ought to please. My God. Oh, God. Oh. I, I, I would imagine, that just my sanctified imagination, that if a snake got a hold of me, I could see somebody in church saying, you know what, I knew that there's something was wrong, Pastor Kwan. <laughs> I, I, I knew that he was not telling the truth. I knew that he was hypocritical. I knew something was wrong with that man. I, I just couldn't figure it out. But I knew that, I, 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 I just knew that, that there was something wrong with that brother. He, he wasn't all that. No, no, I've been listening to him and I've heard people talk about him. But now, finally, I got a clear understanding who he is. Because some things will happen to him that would not have happened if he was in God's hand. On the other hand, oh, my God, Pastor Kwan is being blessed. He must be a man of God. And I'm also aware that I have my critics. I can't listen to them. Oh, you, you, you have some critics. In fact, you got some mean critics. On the other hand, you got some folk who praise you, and you can't listen to either one of them. My God. My God. Some folks would just say you're nice, and you start believing it. I'm all that in a bag of chips, and you got a hole in the bag. (laughs) 
You can't please everybody. And my brothers and sisters, the only way you can shake Satan off of you is turn to God. All of us will make mistakes in life. Paul was not perfect, yet God used him. Nobody that God ever used was ever perfect. Even when the Lord called him, and those who questioned why God could even call this man who was a blasphemer, why would God choose him? Why? <laughs> Confession is needed. Oh, God. And you have to walk with a sense of purpose and know who you are. You cannot let people determine who you are. Come on, somebody talk to me. You need to have the knowledge that God is with you no matter what happens. No matter what happens. I preached before, I preached before about our president and I said before that he must have read this devotion because of all the criticism he has received, he still walks with a swagger. <laughs> that he has been able to keep his head. Cause, you know, there's some people uh, who will affirm the president no matter what he does. I mean, you know, I feel like preaching this. There's some people who will dislike the president no matter what he does. And on the other hand, there's some folks who say the president can do no wrong. But you have to have an objective mind to be able to look at the person and not always agree with everything politically, but you don't have to put the person down either. There's some people who will Praise you for being the new chairman of the deacons. In their mind, you can do no wrong, but don't you let that inflate you, brother. Because they're standing waiting for you to mess up. And all of us, regardless of what position we have, whether we are just a pew member, will find ourselves with critics. And also, at the same time, we'll find ourselves with praisers. So how do you handle your critics and how do you handle your praises? Always remember that it's God who gets the glory in every situation. Whether you're being put down or picked up, always remember who you are and whose you are. Always remember that God has your back. Always remember that even when Satan latches onto you, that a weapon formed against you shall prosper and you can walk through the fire and still not be consumed. Anybody here know what I'm talking about? You can walk through the fire and still not be consumed. Paul came out of this. Even though he was bit by a poisonous snake, he came out of it stronger than he did before because God has a way of using those experiences to toughen us, to stretch. Anybody here know what I'm talking about? God has a way of using what they meant for evil to turn it around for good. He must be a God. And not that people want us to even look like we're God, but there is a God who has kept us. What they tried to do was make Paul a God, but God had another way of looking at this. He knew he was not God, but he also knew who God was. And you need to know who God is in your life. So when Satan gets a hold of you, you can say, God, protect me. God, keep me. God, sustain me. Anybody know what I'm talking about? God has a way of taking you through the fire, through the flood. Through all kinds of adversities and you still come out like pure gold. Anybody here know what I'm talking about? They tried to put you down, but God kept you, kept your mind, kept your heart. How did you do it? Nothing but God. I thought we had you finished. They thought they finally had Paul now. A poisonous snake had grabbed hold of him. We finally got this man. But Paul came out stronger, more determined because God had a plan for his life. God has a plan for your life. And no matter what happens, no matter what, and 
doesn't say, but I would imagine that when that snake grabbed a hold of him and latched onto his arm, because Paul also said all things pray. So he probably was praying while that snake was biting. <laughs> anybody know what prayer can do? Anybody know what, uh, anybody here know what prayer can do? I got a poison snake on me, but I'm praying. I'm believing. I'm trusting God. I got this snake on me about to pull me down, but I know what God's able to do. And my brothers and sisters, the image of a snake is important because it represents the devil. And some of us, the devil thought he had us. God, I feel like preaching. The devil thought that he finally had won us over. He latched on to us and would not let go. For generations in our homes, the devil has had our family. And the devil thought he almost had us. Addiction, drugs, prosecution. Come on, somebody. You, you, you haven't always been saved. You know something about what I'm talking about. You were walking on that path, and you knew that God had somehow abandoned you, and you thought that what others would say, you'd never mount to everything, you'd never be anything, and you were almost convinced that your life was over. However, God stepped in, and what you thought was dead, he brought alive. He brought alive. Oh, come on, somebody. Dead in sin, he resurrected you, gave you a new life. Turn your life around. Took those needles out of your arms. Took that drinking out your mind. Anybody here know what I'm talking about? Anybody here know what I'm talking about? Have you ever ran into somebody you haven't seen in a long time? And they look at you and wonder, are you the same person? Come on, somebody talk to me. You see a classmate. I, you know, I, 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 man, I remember you when we partied together. We hung out together. You know, we did a lot of stuff together. And I'm still doing it. What you doing? I let that go, brother. I met somebody. Changed my life. It turned me around. I'm not all I used to be, but I thank God I'm not what I couldn't be. Oh, come on, somebody talk to me this morning. Never be filled up about somebody else's thoughts about you because they can change. It's what God thinks about you that's important and what you think about yourself. So when I was reading this, I said to myself, there's some times in my own personal life when I thought Satan had me. And I know that some of you don't even look back there, but some of us know that Satan had us in his grips. Anybody here know what I'm talking about? We, we, we were hanging out with Satan and enjoying it. Let, let me go back to the point I made again. The people who play with snakes, they don't think the snake can turn on them. Now, and people tell you, don't play with them, and they still think they can play with them. They make them as a pet. People sleep in the bed. I don't know how nobody sleep in the bed with a snake. In fact, I didn't want to go to their house if they got one in the cage because he might get out. My God. My God. Come on, preacher. I think I have a niece. She still got a snake. I wouldn't go in her house. She had a snake in her house. I mean, why would you handle something that you can't control? You can't control Satan. He will control you. Come on, somebody talk to me. My God. Well, let me do it this way. I'm, I'm almost finished. Point one. I don't know why. I'm, I'm, I'm getting ready to say something now, and you, you can take it to the bank. I don't know why we continue to smoke. My God. Why? Come on. Teach this. CBS just took all the cigarettes. They're going to take them out of the store. Now, you know what secondhand cigarettes can do, and you're still puffing. You know it's going to kill you. But you think you're bigger than that. My God. My God. 
And you're trying to do it on yourself. That's why you can't stop. My God. Well, here's the analogy. Why are you still messing with Satan? You know it's going to be your demise. Well, why is it so quiet in here? It will take you out of here. Not to imagine. Man, cigarettes. How much cigarettes cost? Well, if you know, it means you're smoking them. You're buying them. <laughs> how, how, many, how much they cost? <laughs> Don't... Somebody, I know you buy some for somebody. How much, how much they cost? More than you pay for your tithes. <laughs> you put your faith in something that that can't help you, and you won't give that much to your tithe. And don't get a carton. Oh, Lord Jesus. How much? Somebody, how much? $75 for a carton. And it's grabbed a hold of you, and you can't let it go. It's poisonous. And by the time they discover it, it's too late because lung cancer is the fastest growing cancer you can have. And they tell you on the pack. Dangerous for your health, and you're still buying it. I didn't figure I'd get too many amens now. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. Don't drink and drive. And I saw something else that said, you want to see God? Keep on texting. I mean, what, what is it that we don't get? We have warning signs. God has given us a blueprint according to his word. Yes, sir. Blueprint. Come on. And you might, you know, and, 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 and listen, just in case you're so religious, I'm not trying to say just so we can clear the level thing. I'm not trying to say that if you smoke, that means you're a bad person. That just means you don't have good common sense. <laughs> That's all that means because, you know, you can do a whole lot of things worse than smoking, but you ask God to help you from getting addicted to nicotine because it'll latch onto you and you can't let it go. And it's not just nicotine. There's a whole lot of things that the devil gets a hold of us and we can't let it go. Eating too much. 